What's up? I'm Steve, United States Marine entrepreneur and instructor of the project. I want to welcome you to another episode of the MDK Wives Show. This is a show where we interview the wives of previous graduates to the project so we can get their perspective from the other side of the lines. And if you didn't know, the project is a 75 hour physical, mental and emotional experience for men that want to become better husbands, even better fathers, entrepreneurs and leaders. So today here on the MDK Wives Show, I want to invite a very special guest, Liz Swift. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. Take the time out of your day. And are you ready to roll? Are you ready to do this? Yes, let's do it. Awesome. Perfect. Perfect. So let's just jump right in. James graduated class 004. We call his class the Corona class because actually while he was in the class, he didn't even know it, but the world had completely shut down in the middle of his class. And he had no idea about it because they had no to phones or computer or anything. So we call him the Corona class has now been a little over a year. So it's going to be kind of cool to get your perspective about how things were before the project, how things were right after the project, and then how they are now a year later, especially you guys are in the fitness industry, correct? Like you run the uh, Fit Body Bootcamp together. So forget about the Corona having a a rough impact on businesses across the country, especially no worse than, than the fitness industry. So that's going to be interesting to hear how you guys dealt with that and did all that. So let's do it. Let's jump right into it. So when, before he joined the project March of last year, how did he approach you about it? How did he, what did, what did you know about it? What did he tell you about it? What were your thoughts, reactions? Like how did that all play out when he first told you about he was thinking about the project? He was, kind of hesitant um i guess it was it had to do with financial or financial standpoint at that time but um when he presented to me and i seen what you guys posted I'm like holy shit that is amazing i think you should do it um i was all for it but i was a little bit concerned about the physical yeah, the physical aspect of it, like that that stuff is pretty intense, but I knew- You're he, not calling him soft, are you? You're not calling him no, soft, No, 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 right, I mean, I knew he sure. could handle, sure. handle it, handle it, but it was just, it was crazy. But I think at that time I encouraged him because I just got done with my personal, um, personal sessions with my life coach and I encouraged him to do it. Anything for, anything to just level up personally, but I thought it would be a great experience for him. Oh, that's awesome. So you were already on your own kind of personal development journey before he even actually came to the project? Yes. Yes. That's so cool. I think that's what a lot of people are missing, right? One person in a relationship will start developing themselves and the other person doesn't. And then all of a sudden they're speaking different languages. So that's, that's really, you took him along for the ride with you. Like you were starting to do it because let's say you started developing yourself. And he's mm -hmm. not, he's just sitting on the couch watching Netflix and eating ice cream, <laughs> right? That's not going to cut it. So that's perfect that you had almost encouraged him to do it because you want to see him go along for the ride yes. with you at the same time. You're both yes. that, that's Absolutely. pretty cool. It, it, you, you see it that way. So how, how soon into, how long ago did you open up the gym? We opened up back in October, 2018. Oh, that's a, by the time he joined the project now a year ago, that was a pretty, pretty new gym, pretty new business, right? Year and a half, maybe a yes. year and a half into it. Yes. Yes. So the fitness industry is a hard enough industry to start off even in great times, right? That's a hard business to get into the profits and get things rolling and you're doing everything yourselves. You're working hard. How, how did you get over the financial part of, you know, the, we're a brand new business. We're in the fitness industry, you know, pretty tough in the beginning there. It takes a few years sometimes to get prof. How did you get over the financial hurdle of, of making the project happen? Well, I think, well, both James and I are on the same page as this, as, as far as mental, mental health, physical health is so important. I don't think you could put a price tag on that but we, we just made it work. You know, there's, um, I don't think you, you could spend enough on yourself. You are like the best investment that you can make. That is awesome. That's awesome. That, and again, that goes back to because you had already been working on 
happened. So it's easy for you to say that you, you had no, you almost couldn't even tell him, no, you can't go spend this money on yourself because you're doing it. You already were doing it. Right. That's awesome. And, and, uh, you were still in the beginning stages of the business. So you just figured it out, just made it happen. Like you're willing to do whatever yes. to work on yourselves, develop yourselves. Absolutely. Okay. That's awesome. So what were some of the, other than financially, once he's all right, he's signed up, you guys agreed to it. You, you're going to make it happen. You're going to figure out how to, how to pay for it and all this other stuff. What were some of the other concerns? And you know, it's some of those videos are pretty scary. I'm in some of those videos. I scare myself watching that shit sometimes. So what were some of the concerns or worries you had? Like once it was, a, it was real that, all right, he's going to be going out to this, this program. What were some of the things that started? Um, mainly I'm like, you're not going to come back and be a big dick. Are you? <laughs> that, is I, awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. But I, I said, I just don't want you yeah. to completely change who you are. I just, I mean, I love you for who you are, but just don't come back a big dick. That's all I ask. <laughs> is that literally what you told him? Yes. <laughs> that, is, that is great. He failed. I actually just interviewed him. He came back here to Southern California. I think you guys were in Northern California. He just came out as a junior instructor with class 008. And I interviewed him in the studio about his experience. He, he never, he failed to mention that part to me. So that's pretty interesting. <laughs> this is the wise who said, we get the real deal. We get the truth about how things work. Like that is awesome. I haven't heard that one yet before. <laughs> Some good stuff. So you thought it was going to change him. How did you think that? Like when you asked him that, like I, but you were probably, you were a little serious with that. You don't want him to come back. What? Like, uh, co like overconfident, like cocky. Like, is that what you were saying? Or how, how did you mean? Yes. Yes. In that aspect, you know, um, he's been, you know, prior to the project, of course he had to read all these books and, um, and one of them that I found interesting of the history of, um, men you know like they've lost of the lot they lost the art of like going out for you know hunting for for food for the family and all of that good stuff and you know here I'm in my head I'm thinking oh god he's gonna come back I am man <laughs> but he didn't it's more of he takes charge of everything now um he's more firm um especially with our kids you know he's not i don't know if i could say this but pussyfooting around stuff he's like no this is how it is and i just love so far it you, so far you called him soft you told him not to come back <laughs> and, dick, and you said he's pussyfooting around wait till he sees this wait till he sees this <laughs> you know he told me to speak from the heart so i'm speaking from the heart That's oh this is things. perfect this is exactly what i want to hear this is all the good stuff <laughs> Nice, nice. So you thought he's gonna come out like this macho, like going to this thing, come back growling and snarling, like that's what you figured he's gonna come back like that, that the type of masculinity that's like frowned upon out there, you know, like yeah, you were thinking. Yeah, yeah, like Perfect. I am man, I'm gonna drop the weights and <laughs> have like yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah, but no, no. Which there's a time for that type of we call it a, a civilized savage or a, a savage servant is what we call it. Like having that balance in between the two. There's a time to be the savage, but always need to remain civilized and take care of your family and, and your, yes. your spouse. So yes. Good. That's that's awesome. So, what areas do you feel like before he went? Like in the back of your head, you're like, all right, this is going to be perfect for you because you need this, this, and this. And maybe you didn't even tell him that, or maybe you just were thinking. You know, the four pillars of the project are the family, fitness, finances, and faith. Faith, not necessarily being religious faith, but faith in yourself, self-confidence. So what kind of areas those, in addition to like leadership, communication, decision-making, things like that are also what the project is about. So what areas did you feel like before he went that in mind you're like, all right, this is the shit you need to work on. This is, you know, you're going to get the answers to this. What were some of those areas that you felt it's, you needed to work on? It's the communication it's being um, being present in the moment and then the work family life balance also along with marriage and work family all of those things that he has to balance which he had a hard time doing um, I think communication is 
the biggest thing. Um, he wouldn't open up to me um, when there was issues, when we would get into arguments, it's always, okay, no, you're right. And sometimes I don't want to hear that. Sometimes I need someone to be, to put me in my place and tell me how you feel. Mm-hmm. Um, but communication has been a lot better. He's opened up a, about a lot of things, his feelings, and um, I could finally know what he's feeling and what he's thinking. So communication is a big thing. And the and of course the balancing. He's more present when he's with us, you know, with the family, or when it's just he and I, or when he's spending one-on-one time with our two kids. So it's that is just been amazing to see the the switch. What was it like before? Can you give some examples or just uh, situations about how it was before you? You're, it sounds like you're pretty feel pretty strong about that. So, <laughs> how was it? How was it before? Like the maybe lack of communication or weak communication? Like what, what was that like before? He wouldn't really. Um, he would. He didn't really want to burden me with his with his stress or what he's thinking or what he is feeling at that time. It's always like, okay, um, I'm going to hold this in to make you feel better. But I personally, when you do that, it just eats you up inside as a person, regardless of what gender you are, you know? So that's one of the things. And he's told, he's mentioned stuff to me that um, he's opened up to me about things that he's never told anybody else. And I, To me, that's, it's amazing because now I know you, I fully know who you are. I can understand who you are and why you're like this and why, um, why you trigger, why you get triggered on certain things. I get it now, you know? So there's a better understanding for the both of us between us. Wow. That's awesome. That's some, some, some deep stuff. So basically he was like, suffering in silence pretty much all the time yes. not wanting to put the stress on you so he would just keep it all himself and all that's going to do is that shit's one day right probably at the wrong time to the wrong probably you're talking about something else with him and he's going to snap at you or explode at you for what he held in two weeks ago that's been just bubbling up bubbling up and then you're like what the hell what the hell you what the, what is the problem right he's like, Rat. absolutely right okay awesome and then so once he graduated, what was it like when he was gone? We, how were you, what were you thinking? What were you feeling like the, the four days when he was gone? I was actually, it, it felt nice at first because it gives the opportunity for both of us to miss one another. And I think that's been the longest that we've never communicated with one another ever since we started dating. Um, but um, I missed him. I was worried and I'm going to be honest. I stalked everyone's <laughs> Instagram just to see if he made it. And when he finally texted me on the last morning or day, he's like, I'm alive. I made it. I was so proud of him, but I was a little bit worried. <laughs> so, you, so from your side, you guys are watching Instagram. Once in a while, we'll put like little stories or little hints or clues about what's going on. We don't give too much information out, but right. so you are you are making use of those. I never, I never know if anyone actually watches that stuff or keeps up to date with it, but I guess you were just refreshing and oh, making yeah. sure. Yeah, that he was okay. Yeah. Did you catch him in any videos there or pictures there or anything like while he was there? Yes, yes. I, I video, rec- actually screen recorded some of them. And I sent them to his dad because his dad is, um, he used to be in the Navy. He's a retired Navy officer. I'm like, look, dad, <laughs> look what your what son's kind of, going through. What kind of stuff through. did you see him doing? What kind of stuff did you see him doing while he was there? Uh, mil- the military crawl on the gravel. Um, the sitting in the beach, <laughs> just mm-hmm. taking on the tides. And I think, I think I got a, um, a glimpse of him digging his own grave. Which I was like, holy shit, that's crazy. 
So you saw all the good stuff, all the fun stuff. You saw him in at the best. Those are like some of the toughest moments there, but some of the best moments there. That's awesome that, that you yeah. experience it a little bit side by side. I don't know if anyone catches on to those or if you were watching, but it looks like you guys are stalking the shit out of those pages. So we'll keep, we'll keep, putting, <laughs> those little, keep putting those little bits out there for you. That's good stuff. So, all right, so he makes it. He, he texts you that Friday, probably Friday evening or at, late afternoon is once they finally – finished and the graduation dinner ceremony was at night so he he texts you he finishes the graduation dinner he comes home the next day or whatever it is what were some of the immediate like i'm talking the minute he's back that you noticed a difference or changes or transformation that like didn't take time like right away what were some of the immediate changes other than him being tired i noticed that he looked lighter like he looked lighter he also looked um very gosh what's the word he was ready to take on the world and um he just well he was hungry too so <laughs> but he he looked a lot lighter like like relieved that's you the mean lighter thing. as in like a load off his shoulders you don't mean yes. lighter as in Lighter as in we, he was starving and needed to eat. <laughs> well, that's you. No, but he looked relieved. Like, a, yeah, a load was taken off of his shoulder. And re, we, rejuvenated, you know, re-energized. There you go. That's the word. That's awesome. What, what do you think was the weight that was on his shoulders that he, he needed to take off, if you have any thought on it? Or what do you think that was? I want to say, I want to say he faced some demons, internal demons with himself. Like he, I don't, he hasn't really shared much with, I should, I should really ask him, but if it looked like he's dealt with some inner demons within himself and he looked more confident in himself actually as well. So, I mean, something. Some yeah, sometimes it doesn't have to be anything so serious or deep, and it might be, and I'm sure you guys will talk about that, but in those things that you saw him doing, like the, you know, crawling through the military, crawl through the weeds, and the ocean with, you know, freezing cold water splashing in your face, and stuff digging his own grave, like, a man learns a lot about himself, even discovers new things about himself, first not only does he find weaknesses about what's been holding him back, what's been his lid that's been holding him back, like he's going to discover some strengths about himself that he never even knew existed, that he hasn't been using, fully utilizing. So sometimes it could be that. He just discovered some new things about him and just coming back. I love what you said. He just came back and you know, the way he's ready to take on the world. Like, have you ever yeah. seen him? Have you ever seen him at that level before that? Or was that like the first time seeing him like that? That was, that was the first time. It was, It's different. It's different from when he used to go to um, headquarters for whatever training. He would come back. He's he's ready. But this this time around, it was different. The look in his eyes was just was more fierce. It was it was just different. That is all, that's an awesome word. I was going to ask you what would be the word of the look in his eyes. And you just answered it right there. <laughs> So he came back some a different approach, a different, you know, pop than you've ever seen before. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the way the way he looked at all three of us, our two kids and myself, it was it was totally different. We went to go get something to eat after we picked him up from the airport. And out of nowhere, he just thanked us and for who we are and he just told us how much he appreciates us and it was it was different you know I mean he usually does tell us but that moment in time I feel like there was a light bulb that went off you know mm -hmm. and maybe he told me about when he when he dug his own grave and he was in there thinking like he he was like oh my god if i get up if i get out i'm just i'm gonna disappoint my family i'm gonna disappoint myself it's gonna you know and all of the things that you go through life he's he thought about 
But that moment when we're sitting in the restaurant waiting for our food, he just it's like, thank you for everything. I love you guys. I was like, wow. Holy shit. <laughs> Who person. is this man sitting here with us? Yes. <laughs> wow, that's that's freaking awesome stuff. And that right there, just right there just makes all worth everything that we do and what those guys do when they come in here. That that makes mm-hmm. and the sacrifice and the pain and the hardship makes it all worth it for them. That's freaking just awesome. So that was immediately you kind of saw this different approach he had, this different fear system. Now a year later, how, how is that now? How how is that same fierceness, that same confidence, that same approach that he has any different than then? Has it been the same? Has it proving? Where are you at now? A year later, where are you what are you kind of seeing? It you know of course with everybody, everybody has a little setback here and there you know, every, everybody goes through it. And he, he did have a little setback, but he bounced right back. And I think he bounced back more better than ever. Um, he has taken the time to really think about things, define things, what they mean to him. And he, his approach with everything is he thinks about how it's going to play out. If he does this, what's, you know, he always has a backup plan. Um, He is more open to letting people in. He's more authentic than before. He's not worried so much about what people think of him. He like, this is me take, you know, this is who I am, take it or leave it. And honestly, I love it. <laughs> I That's absolutely- a freedom. That's like a personal freedom, right? Just to uh, be yourself and no longer work with the hell people and not give a shit what other people think about you. That's yeah. It, it's every, I say like every time he does something that something to that nature where he brings out his authenticity. It surprises the shit out of me. I'm like, holy shit, there you are. There, there it is. <laughs> and I love wow, it. That's, that's freaking cool. That That's cool. So, and some of the, I'm guessing some of the setbacks he probably had in the last year is he's fairly new in the fitness industry. I think we're starting the project. You said he's only, your gym was only open for about a year and a half. And at the time you weren't working in the gym at all. And so that's a tough year to go through. Uh, with with having a fitness industry during all the lockdowns, gyms are not one of the you know ideal businesses to have during that all this crazy, stupid stuff going on. Yeah, where where was the business, the 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 gym and and your business, knock on through the project and it had to deal with all this quarantines and shutdowns and all this stuff. Do you think there would have been a different outcome with the business, or where would you see things now in the business if he had never gone through the project and kind of learned how to deal with these things? I don't think we would be in business, quite honestly. I think you, um, I think we would have given up. Um, but what do you think made that not happen? His integrity with himself and with me, you know, um, he's like, I can't, I can't fail. I can't fail you. I can't fail myself. And he holds a lot of integrity within himself. So if it wasn't, for that, I don't think we would be where we're at. You know, the he's also like, I don't, I don't give a shit what Newman, you know, what the governor says, we're gonna stay open. We're gonna do it. We're gonna push through it. So I don't think if he didn't have the type of mentors that he has, I don't think we would still be in business. That's that's some strong stuff, right? Some that's I mean, these are just bombs. These are just bombs dropping. This is good stuff. So, and I know now you're working in the gym with him. How do you think, let's say he didn't go through the project. Do you think you ever would have been able to work in the business with him, even just part-time? Do you think that was a quick, no, I didn't finish the question. You're just <laughs> nodding your face. You knew what was coming. You just like, hell no, hell no. Yeah. Why, 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 wouldn't, why wouldn't that have worked before the project? 
Um, the way he is, it's, I want it this way. I want it done a certain way. He doesn't like asking for help. And I think a lot of, also a lot of it has to do with me working also full-time in my full-time position, my full-time job. Mm -hmm. But now it's, he, he thought about what the definition of a partner is. And um, I don't think he would have ever thought about that prior to the project. Um, he's really good about asking for help now. And the partnership between us is a real partnership. So, he, and also the communication. Yeah, communication is big. <laughs> But yeah, you wouldn't have even been able to deal with that old version and working together in the same building, building a business together. You just wouldn't have been able to even deal with that before the project. Right. And how, right. how is yeah. it now? You know, you, how long have you now been actually in working in the business with him? He just actually really let me in um, at the beginning of this year, to be honest with you. Okay. So a few months. Yeah. How's it's it been, going in, those, in that time? How's it been working together now? in there the, it's been months. really good it's been really good and now it's like okay you handle that i don't have to worry about that you handle that okay <laughs> so it's been That's really awesome. good good stuff good stuff so now that now how do you so that was before the project we talked about during it we talked about it immediately when he came home now a year down the line how do you see now the of your relationship your business your family you know another year from now three five 10 years from now, knowing what you know now, what he's picked up from the project, connections and the brotherhood that he's creating the project. How do you see the future of your family, your business and your relationship with him, oh. you know, post, post project? Oh, everything, everything's going to be successful. We're going to, you know, of course, marriage is work and we're going to continue to work on ourselves with each other. We're going to make sure that we're not growing apart, but we are growing together individually and together. You know, we're going, we've, we try our best to influence our kids, teach them, you know, what we weren't, whatever we haven't learned from our parents, what we've currently learned. And, you know, I think it's going to, we're going to be amazing. We're going to be, we're going to have a strong bond i feel like our bond is going to continue to be strong um as far as the business i've our goal is to dominate the sacramento area if possible um and we're going to work hard to do that it's going to be a lot of work but i see us doing it i see us conquering it building an empire <laughs> Conquering and domination and empire. These are the kind of words we want to hear after the project. This is what it's all about. Coming from an MDK wife, this is this is freaking awesome. This is some good stuff. So I think we we got tons out of this. I got tons out of this. And I want to thank you for coming to, to join me here on the MDK Wife Show. Is there anything that you would say to a a gentleman's wife? So maybe maybe a, some a couple that's thinking about, you know, the the man might be thinking about joining the project anything you would just advise you to have for that couple maybe they're struggling maybe they are starting to as you said they start you know going separating in their own different ways rather than getting more cohesive and they're considering the project seems like it's an expensive thing what's something you would tell people in that position kind of where you were you know a year ago what's what's some advice you'd have for them don't think about it just do it you are the most um your vet, your investment in yourself is priceless. Just do it. There's no, there's no amounts of money for investing in yourself. Just do it. Yeah, people invest in their they'll buy, they'll build a new bathroom for twenty thirty thousand dollars in their house, right? Uh, right. I have neighbors who are out of shape, but they'll sit and water their lawn for two three hours a day, time or money to go get in shape or whatever it is. So. You are your most important client is pretty much what, what you're saying. Absolutely. You your yes. That, that is awesome stuff to end this on. So again, I want to thank you for joining me here on the MDK Wives show. 
Liz, appreciate you taking that day. If you or James need anything, you are both part of the Projects family. You now have an army supporting you around you. If you ever need anything, just please reach out. We will do anything we can to help you out. So thanks again for coming on the show. Thank you. Awesome. Let me know if you need anything else. Thanks. This has been another episode of the MDK Wild Show. If you got any, anything out of this or you know someone that needs to hear some of the things we just talked about, whether it's in their relationships, whether it's uh, becoming a better husband, a better father, a better leader, a better entrepreneur for men, please like and share this video. Subscribe to the channel down below. And if you need anything, let me know. You are freaking awesome. Thanks again, Liz. I will talk to you Thank soon. Thank you. No excuses.